vegan travelers. It is a cold and rainy day outside, so I thought I would stay in and try my hand at vlogging again. So today's topic is accommodation in all its many forms. The first type of accommodation I'm going to talk about is the hotel. Now, there are a lot of good reasons to stay in a hotel. Um, it's kind of higher end accommodation and you get all those sort of fancy perks and free soaps and hot showers and it's very private. Um, sometimes you even get a TV. However, it is usually the most expensive option. So the cons of staying in a hotel are the rent itself is usually quite expensive depending on the area and you don't have a kitchen. So then you have to add the cost of dining out every evening um, to the overall cost of the stay. Ross and I have personally almost never stayed in hotels for this entire trip. Um, it's definitely easy to avoid if you don't mind sharing rooms. So the next kind of accommodation I'm going to talk about is the kind you can find on Airbnb, which varies greatly, but specifically I'm going to talk about the sort of guest house. Sometimes you end up with a really great location and a really great accommodation for an amazing price. Like when we were in Montego Bay, we stayed at Together Nest and paid about $20 a night between the two of us. And we essentially had a villa to ourselves. We had a great view of the city, great view of the ocean. Um, there was a pool in the front yard. Another pro is that you're staying in a local's home, so you're not staying on the tourist strip. You get a better feel for the way that locals really live. Some of the cons for Airbnb are that um, Sometimes it can be quite expensive depending on where you're looking and what's available in the area. Uh, sometimes things are a bit farther out of the way because you're staying in a local's home and not in a hotel. Another con is that sometimes the listing isn't accurate or you don't really get what you expect out of this day. When we were staying in Kyoto in Japan, we were stuck without a kettle or a microwave or a stove or anything. The next type of accommodation I'm going to talk about is probably one of the better known ones. Staying in hostels. Um, there are hostels everywhere, so that's a huge pro. But even if you don't plan ahead or you're hitchhiking so you don't really have a solid schedule, you can walk into any tourist part of town and find yourself a hostel. Another pro is that they're usually the cheapest option and that you'll run into travelers from all over the world while you're staying in hostels. You can exchange details, maybe couch surf with them later, um, and it's really good. It's a good sense of community in a hostel if you stay there for a while. It's also really helpful to have um, the reception in hostels. They're quite knowledgeable about what travelers and backpackers want out of the area. Many of them are quite good at pointing out the best vegan places to eat. I find that the biggest pro for staying in a hostel is that they usually have kitchens and oftentimes will have a section of free food. So if you don't want to buy an entire thing of oil to make one meal, you have that available to you. And um, it's really way more cost effective to be able to cook your own meals. Most of the cons are related in that they have to do with privacy. So. If you want to stay in a cheap hostel or in the cheapest room, you could be sharing with anywhere from 4 to 50 people in the same room, which also means that you could be woken up many times in the night by partying and other sorts of touristy things. The last type of accommodation I'm going to talk about is couch surfing. I think the biggest pro with couch surfing is that you get to spend time with locals and have a sort of cultural exchange and learn about the way that people in the area actually live. You can meet some amazing people while couch surfing. Um, two of the experiences that we had, our host took us around the city, showed us where all the vegans eat, and uh, it was really, really great. Another pro of couch surfing is that it's virtually free. What I mean when I say that it's virtually free is that you don't pay any sort of rent or accommodation price, but it is quite polite although not expected, to bring a gift to your host or prepare a meal for them or just to spend some time with them. You have to remember that your host isn't a hotel. They're a person opening their home to you for you to stay. Some of the cons of couch surfing are that it is a bit unreliable in that you're relying 
on someone else's schedule being available for you to come and stay. You rely on them not changing their minds or changing their schedule. Because you are going into a stranger's home, your safety is also not as guaranteed as if you were staying somewhere with a locked door. You might be staying in an apartment by yourself when you couch surf, or you might be staying on the wooden floor of someone's cupboard. It's really up to the host and up to the location and the availability. There are still loads of other ways you can find accommodation while traveling, from renting an apartment, to house sitting, to camping, to wolfing where you work in a hostel for room and board. However, because of the nature of our trip, where we hop from place to place quite quickly, Ross and I have been unable to do any of these things. If you have personal experience with any of these types of accommodation, let us know your pros and cons in the comments below. See you later! If you have experience in any of these types of accommodation, please send your... Send? <laughs> P.O. Box! <laughs> Vancouver, B.C.